Good evening, good evening. I got a few windows opened up here. A um, lot of stuff going on. Um, a Halloween show is coming up here. Um, somebody did mention I did hit 25,000 subscribers. We hit, I think, 3 million total views just uh, like yesterday or something, all at the same time. I'm going to give away some stuff for Halloween. It's going to be a big thing. I'm going all out for it. There'll be some previews of the show at the ends of a few videos coming up. I'm going to be fully decked out in a full costume. Um, I'm going all out. This is the same costume um, that I'm going to wear out in public somewhere um, at a specific type of event. It's a safe event, just FYI. Um, I've got some money invested in the costume. It's something that I've always wanted. So anyway, we will uh, pretty much uh, shout out some stuff and what's going to be given away. You have to be on Instagram. The winner will be announced on Instagram. So just FYI, it will be announced on the actual date of the live show. Um, we've got a lot of stuff going on on this end. Maybe I don't show everything that we do, but we do a lot of things here. Um, one other thing here, and I've had some people ask about this in the past. This is the resin kit that I had for my um, Trilobite model. I carved this. We cast them. I've got a bunch of these. We've sold some. Um, I had some offers to produce them for some places, but I don't want to sign into an exclusive contract or I can't do them myself. What we did have coming up with, and I know people have asked on some of the toys, this is the exact same. I'm sorry it's kind of translucent with the green screen, but this is the same exact thing. We bought some polymer that you can shrink it. So then we're, we've got some small versions. They're actually already done, but um, they're going to be on a card just like you'd buy like an action figure and stuff like that. I, again, I'm not trying to market because how many people are going to want a Trilobite, but um, this is some of the stuff we're doing to mass produce um, toys. Uh, again, we're shooting for Christmas and it looks like it will be on the way. I got my backer boards in with all the graphics. I got the bubbles all made and the whole works and stuff. It's got a stand and the whole works. So, I mean, that's another one of our ploys. I'll probably have a video on that um, for the other channel, just FYI. I, I have shot it. It's all on video. I've got like Geez, like a hundred hours of video for the other channel. I just haven't had any time to edit it with the other stuff we do. Still staff-wise issues and stuff with um, college. A lot of our employees are in college. Both my kids are in college and stuff like that too. And yeah, everybody who works for me is in college. Every single employee I got is a college student, which doesn't help to the work aspect of it, but I'm happy that they're going to college. I'd rather have them go to college than you know, busted here or something, truthfully, because, you know, education is, is important to me personally. Um, we'll get to some names, some other things going on. eBay execs, let me just shoot this and get it out of the way. Four of them are just going to plead guilty. Just They're going to admit they did everything that was said, apparently. Um, it makes me wonder, since it's not going, you know, all over news, It's I saw it in a little snippet from a local one, um, the point of it is I, I have to wonder if they're like maybe turning evidence over or, you know, maybe they're going to be state's evidence against somebody else. I don't know, but that's always my, my wonder when it doesn't go to court and it's signed over so quick. And four of them, including head of global security, um, are going to plead guilty. Uh, you, you just got to wonder who else may be wrapped up in, in why the plead so so soon. But it sounds like they got them all dead to right. This isn't some maybe it happened or maybe it didn't happen. It 100% happened, word for word, what was spoken in there. I'm only bringing it up again because it's on news right now. Nothing, you know, it's going to change in anything I'm doing, whichever thing happens. Again, these people don't work for eBay anymore. Obviously, we know what the culture was. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt, which goes a little bit into reselling um, site fees and stuff like that. That's another one of those factors that, that I look at for things. eBay, for once, and I, I almost hate to have to say this, but they actually did a good thing with the structure of the new fees and the ZIFs, the zero insertion fees, in my book. Again, we're saving over $1,000 every single month. I mean, I just... It's it's astonishing to me that they, they would do that. But again, their competitor offers thirty nine ninety nine business plans, Amazon, if you don't know, um, which we pay. I have a business account and had one on Amazon for now almost four years. Um, 
they're mimicking that aspect, which is fine to me because that means for 50 bucks or 59.99, you can have 50,000 listings up before you have to worry about anything on eBay. So, you know, talking about site fees and this and that, and, and I bring this up too because I had a conversation with two people after my video yesterday. We'll I will talk out. We'll haul out some names. I just want to get this all out here. <clears throat> um, hang on. Hopefully, everybody can hear me. Yeah, Annie may be right. It may be the underlings, but uh, the, I would call the head of global security for the whole company an exact whether technically or not, he would hold a high enough position to, to warrant that. And I know that's one of the positions that actually is pleading guilty. I read the article and I've been busy all day long, but um, with like some of the other sites everybody sells on, I always look at prices. I know which Poshmark is 20%. If it's over, what's it? 15 bucks. Under 15 bucks, it's 3.95. Now, Mercari, I have everybody telling me it's cheap, and I've been saying this forever that the minute that they get a chance to hike the prices, they're doing it. And if if you don't know, uh, as of October, Mercari is adding a 2.95 or 2.99 percent. Uh, fee on every single sale that you have on there as well as a 30 cent fee processing fee just like eBay. I, I, I knew they were going to do that I almost have to wonder if eBay didn't do this on purpose to leverage themselves ahead of of um, Mercari which is a smart thing to do but it makes me wonder if that wasn't part of what's going on um again it puts them Mercari where you're paying more to sell on their site than on eBay, and you're getting less exposure, less everything else. I really dug into Mercari because I keep having people show me stuff and tell me this, that they're making all this money and stuff. I looked into all the details again because it might have been a viable platform. I looked at Better Business Bureau, which if you ever look at that, you ever had a deal and talk to them, they actually saved us a lot of money. We had a car company called Big Orange Tire in Orlando mess up our hub on a car and they didn't grease it. So we were on the highway and the, the hub melted. It fused together and burned up the whole front end of our car on the side of the road when we were on the way to see my uh, father-in-law who was in the hospital having surgery in Mississippi. And this happened in Ocala when all the murders were going on in Ocala. Um, so we weren't happy. And anyway, the Better Business Bureau, Better Business Bureau, uh, Bureau got us our money back. I'm sorry. I've been talking all day. So, I mean, I, I always look at them as a place that I can respect enough. Um, it looks terrible for Mercari. And then I looked at all the leading sites for reviews and stuff, and they had perfect, real good reviews up until they started to do the free forced free um, shipping or, or your higher ranking for free shipping and then now with the fees oh my gosh i've never seen so many complaints rise in a matter of two months now they announced this change in august i think i got a notice on august 27th about it if i'm not mistaken i, I looked into that um poshmark staying the same ebay staying the same obviously they've lowered it so if you're in managed payments fee structure everything's different now which is is a huge 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 plus again i'm not trying to defend eBay. Anybody who's watched my channel for any length of time knows I'll, I'll be happy to say it however I feel on what eBay's doing, but right now they're doing fairly well with, with overall um, changes. Again, this is like a shocker. I'm, I'm literally still can't believe they did that with the free listings because they're, they're giving away. If, if you talk to if people out there, talk to some folks that I talk to who have more listings than I do. I, I talk to, there's three people that I, I talk to occasionally, two or three times a week on some cases that have 100,000 listings on eBay. And and they didn't have a way to pay like a lump sum until recently. And it's still a lot of money, mind you, if you pay for multiple extra listings and all that stuff. So they're saving, oh my gosh, just so much more than even we're saving, three times it. You know, it's some phenomenal, like 30 grand they could be saving. I didn't ask for their numbers, but I know what they were paying before as we discussed pay with these folks before. Um, you know, it, it's a good thing. Fee structure is a good thing, in, in my opinion, what they've got it set up now. Again, I think they just undercut Mercari just like that um, with all the other issues and stuff. I had somebody hit me up, too, that, that they said that um, if... And they showed me a screenshot, so I don't think they're they're fibbing on this, that they had an issue with something being sent out. It was already mailed out. And the end of the day, Mercari ended up 
forcing a refund to this person. The person got the item and then they were just screwed. And then another person told me, in fact, one of these is on Better Business Bureau. It's the only reason I thought to look there after talking to somebody that um, they were out of town and the package arrived while they were out of town and there was something wrong with it. It was past the three days and they were, pardon me, screwed. So that, that was another one of those things. But I personally won't deal with Mercari at all after what I've looked into. So just FYI, they can get away with a lot of things because they're not technically centered in this country and if you're not aware anything that's banned on ebay you can't sell on mercari either there's a statement on there i somebody showed me the link i looked it up that's exactly what it says on their uh, prohibited items page it doesn't say specific items but what it says is any uh charge card uh collection service collection site any anyone that's out there if there's something that's banned on those it's banned on there and i emailed them about that and that's pretty much what the the gist of that statement is so uh, again bonanza is off my plate i won't touch bonanza uh you can see why in the video yesterday i don't care what it costs my time is just not worth it um just like i ordered a shirt for my son off of etsy the other day I buy on Etsy. We buy buy stuff from them. There's a couple people that do some phenomenal work, and maybe someday I'll try and get them on a show or something. But um, the the person didn't check Etsy. He had so few sales, he never checked it. So a week, week went by, 14 days went by, and I finally sent a notice. So I'm a very patient person on stuff that I don't need. And he totally wasn't checking because he hadn't had any sales on there in a while. And that's that's an issue if you don't if you're selling on a site and you don't sell very often. And you don't want to check every single day because you hardly ever have anything. You may miss something. And that was an issue with getting on a site that just has such slow sales. And then you got to learn certain aspects of that site for maybe one sale every three, four months. It's just not worth the hassle. Um, about the average people that I've talked to have maybe sold two or three items for an entire year on Bonanza. I don't know what everybody else has, but the ones that I've talked to have left comments text me and things like that that's about their average we talk to a lot of obviously resellers these days um it's neat to get the inside scoop on what other people see personally that's my my take on it um let's pop up here i've got two laptops open well actually i got three but um i know i got a whole bunch in here already and i did see duncan was in here first obviously queen victoria if qv if you ever look at qv and you see an ad or something on ebay it's queen vic queen victoria um, it's literally for anything with, that she's in it. You'll see uh, QV if it's British oriented. Sometimes you'll see UK QV in the title of a stamp, a postcard. It's obviously United Kingdom, Queen Victoria. You know, just FYI. I love Victorian stuff. It's some of the the spooky Halloween stuff. It's just blows my mind that they could think of some of that stuff with, you know, the environment then compared to how it is now. But anyway, Dean Thunder Bar Thunder Burke, well, hello. I've had a big problem with shipping. Every time I go onto eBay's site and try to ship a package, I get a message saying no service. I had one uh, yesterday, and I think it was due to the length of the package in first class. And I have to look that up because I almost never send out a, a tube mailer like that size. And I, I really think that there might have been some issues with it because I changed the size on it on a bulk bulk huge list and it kicked just that one out and you don't know it's going to kick it out until you actually hit purchase it goes through it prints or does the whole uh processing of all of them except the one that it happens to kick out so then you got to go back in and uh it said it was fine it was all green so um literally that's what i think it is sometimes if you change the mode of service the size or the weight it does correct some of the issues that i've seen in the uh, bulk editor again i bulk bulk purchase or bulk mail everything if I do it through eBay. Um, in a little bit here, too, I want to talk about something we also did find out, or something that seems a little suspicious um, from some some of the um, API Lincolns that we have with eBay, something on eBay's side, which puzzles me and makes me worry a little bit. But uh, anyway, hopefully everybody is doing okay today. Hey, Aaron, how are you doing this evening? I haven't had a chance to talk to hardly anybody in quite a little while. I did talk to Dama a couple days ago, but uh, let's see here. Patrick Annalor, how are you doing? Nice spike in sales. Once Labor Day was over for me, recently took a chance on a lot of comics at an auction, make good money, but realized I hate selling comic books. 
I like selling comic books, and I really get a thrill if I run across like vintage Golden Age ones personally. Yeah. You just got to know to count the pages and make sure if it's a vintage one centerfolds there. And, you know, I don't usually make any specific claims on the condition if I sell it. I'll just say looks to be in such and such and, you know, please uh, examine it yourself. I flatbed the expensive ones, uh, pretty much everything. And I use the, what's it, the V6000 or 6600 uh, Epson flatbed. It's one of the... Uh, double paneled ones. It's an open flatbed, but uh, it's got a scan on the top with a light and one on the bottom. I don't know what, what's the model number, but I've talked about that one before. Um, I do like comic books. As everybody knows who watches Dom, Dom's a big comic book guy too. Well over what, what I am in comic books, but I don't always talk about it. I sold a nice one today, a March of uh, Comics one of the small promo ones um, from the 50s, just today. Got pretty decent money considering it was a dollar purchase. Teresa, how are you doing this evening? Hudson Resale, good evening as well. On eBay, people complaining about lowball offers should just use auto-declined, auto-accept. I don't know why so many waste time trying to go, uh, negotiate on lowball prices. Now, I rarely get lowball prices, but I got some last week. And honestly, I just counter back on every single one. Unless, like, let's say it's a thousand dollar item and they offer like a dollar or two, I'll just cancel and block them. That's all I do. I don't discuss if they're a dollar or two on a, and they do a couple of them. I'll do you know a block instantly, just because they're just wasting my time. Um, but if they send like it's a fifty dollar item and they send a nine dollar offer or something, I'll shoot back like at thirty four fifty or something, you know, and probably. 55, 60% of the time, they'll come back with something more reasonable. It's the reason I always do it. I never turn down, once you've got some conversation going with a potential buyer, I never turn it down. And obviously that dollar on a thousand dollar item or just somebody just being a jerk is a different story. If they make some comment or something, usually that's a block. I don't care. You know, we got enough business that I don't really need to deal with somebody. Plus it's bad for business if you deal with somebody who's a jerk before you even sell them something because... You know, you sell them something after they're a jerk, they may only have the intention of being a jerk and then try and scam you. So I don't mess with anybody who does that sort of thing, truthfully. Um, let me just shout this out, too, here on for channel-wise. If you're going to leave a comment about someone else's comment, don't insult them on their comment. I blocked three people for just doing that, just because I don't... I, I, even if you're not attacking me, I don't care. You don't attack even other channels on my feed. Even if it's a channel I don't really care about that there's folks who know, I still block those. I don't let you post something, even downgrading another channel. I don't post links for the most part ever either. Every uh, uh, post on there is looked at by someone here. Maybe not me, but someone looks at every single one of those and nothing nasty gets posted. I just don't like that. I try to keep it more family oriented. You know, I don't cuss or anything like that. Um, I just, just me, you know, no offense to anybody, but, um, let's pop on down here. And again, thank you, Hudson Resale on the, the subscriber count there. Hey, Penny, how are you doing? And right below is Kathy. For those in Patreon, I just put up like a, maybe it's 30 or 35 minute video today. I should have another one up for you tomorrow about the same length. And I'm looking for... Sunday for a live show if I can work it in between say two and four for patreon um, There was some things and questions and things like that I got some paper that I might do a live talk on some paper that day as well I got some really cool Yale versus Harvard game tickets and things like that um, some national uh, Polo Association tickets for the national champ. I got some real neat stuff. I'm not a big huge into sports But I love the tickets. I buy any kind of tickets. I can get my hands on we happen to run across someone who was selling a whole bunch of dirt cheap and generally I wouldn't have run out again. I'm trying not to buy anything, honestly, but at a dollar a ticket, you know, I, I, I couldn't couldn't pass this one up. Um, even if they sit there for a year because I don't have time to mess with them. I don't care. At a dollar a ticket, they're probably $150 each and I got a nice stack of them. So again, I don't complain when somebody uh, throws stuff on me. And again, they're not in the greatest condition, but that's the price I should get even in the condition they're in. But uh, let's see here. Uh, anybody know how to easily add a watermark to a photo? I don't think you're allowed to put watermarks on your photos, Patrick, if I'm not mistaken. I do believe that's against eBay's policy and has been for some time. You will see some that are on there, but I almost, I'm almost positive 
that that's against the rules. You can't do that. Just like um, they used to offer, and some you'll still see in like the coins and stamps where you can have like a professional membership credential um, insignia on your, your name still. There's still some folks that were grandfathered, and I wished I could have got one of those back when they were available. Now it's a little too late, even though I do have some stuff. But uh, anyway, uh, again, I don't think you can uh, do a watermark, though. Uh, let's see here. Unicorns don't lie. How are you doing this evening? And right below, hey, Marty, how are you doing this evening, too? Hope uh, warm and sunny Florida is doing well for you. i got to get the right mouse. Again, I've got two laptops open, so if this one jams up, my feed's always awful on the one I'm always streaming from. This is a new laptop, too. As I said, we're still working out some things in here uh, much better than I had before, so it looks like everything's playing fairly decent. Again, we've got new lights in the whole work, so hopefully quality and condition, and it's not too washed out or anything. But... Uh, Kathy's listing. Yeah, I was listing. The wife was listing. We're bombarding eBay right now. Again, we changed everything up. I cut everything off, and it's all about listing now. Um, I just had a video about this. I really, honestly, and sincerely, after looking at every piece of data, think no matter what happens, this Christmas should still be good. At least if you're selling stuff that's, you know, expendable income type of items, stuff that people don't really need. If you are into that stuff like vintage and stuff, I think the people that have the money now are still going to have it on Christmas and they're still going to be buying stuff from what I see because our sales are pretty darn good right now. I can't really complain at all. I mean, I'm able to keep adding to my bank account at the end of every week a real nice amount, especially with eBay's help with the free listings. I mean, I'm just still dumbfounded by that. You know, it's like getting close to like 300 plus a week for free every single week since they started this you know it's it's a big push i just i'm still dumbfounded that they did that um let me slide down here i know i'm terrible sometimes on it we'll get to some other things here um topics going on being oil how are you doing got gail right down below salutations back at you nantique good evening as well Thank you also, Kathy. Jazz and products. Yeah, the down, I, I totally don't care about the down, down leaks. It's, it's probably the same person has several different YouTube accounts because it happens right after. And there's somebody who even follows her page because we've got a timer on the first one. So when one clicks, it's usually just a few moments after I post a link. On it. I don't care. It, YouTube's going to get rid of that ability. You have to watch so many minutes of it or at least play it before you can do that. That's one of the things I saw in one of the update comments. Um, and again, it's all interaction. YouTube only looks at an interaction. If you notice, sometimes some of the videos have like a ton of, of thumbs down. They still get a lot of views because it's still interaction. As long as the video is interacted some way, whether it's somebody leaving a comment and all this other stuff, it always seems to help the channel. Again, I'd rather have people leave thumbs up. So if you haven't left the thumbs up and you do like the channel and enjoying the conversation, please hit that thumbs up on me there. Yeah, I think uh, Kathy has a channel too as well. You're up to what, 168. Wish you the best of luck, Kathy, as well. Uh, CDL Picker, how are you doing? With managed payments, is eBay taking the fees or are they going to bill us? My bill is just a few dollars compared to what it used to be. All of the fees, the final value fees and everything else, other than the listing fees and any upgrades, are taken out as you take the payments in. So at the end of the week, the check that comes in or your, your transfer to your bank account is all yours, basically. Obviously, you got to pay the monthly fee. So if you only have a $59.99 monthly fee you've got that uh package on the store that's what your bill is going to be is 59.99 that's it you know unless you've got upgrades or you paid for like a highlight or bold or you know the two dollar extra or like a gallery package deal in some of the listings or something because i i saw one the other day i was listing in a category i don't usually list in and um I usually use the free gallery, which is in most collectibles, and it was a dollar to do it in another category. I didn't do it, of course. I don't pay a dollar. I don't pay anything extra um, if I don't have to. There's a couple listings that I spend ten cents a month on, or is it ten cents a month? Yeah, there's a ten cent upgrade on a couple listings that I have. 
Um, I won't go into what I do with that because that's something I've been trying and I don't know if it works yet. But anyway, uh, hey, Carl, how are you doing this evening? Good to see you in here. Another sunny Florida resident there. Book Retro Barn, Australia. Good evening as well. Good day. Good day back at you. And I did see Annie. How are you doing this evening, Annie? I was watching one of your videos. Well, I was kind of playing in the background. I don't get much time to watch one. It was very educational, I should say. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, the eBay exec stuff, um, it's it's not going to be over. They've hushed the news on this. There's no other way that wouldn't be all over the place had there been, you know, some other issues going on. I just can't imagine that they wouldn't have announced that in major news right off the bat. But again, it's not the, the highest ranking folks still aren't the ones, I guess. I think they're going to try and hold on out. But it really makes me wonder if, if somebody signed a plea bargain to take a lesser penalty if they plead guilty especially in cohorts like that in a group of four doing it all at the same time. You know, I, I look into legal aspects. I, at one time I was going to go to law school, believe it or not, but um, my wife always says I should have went and been a lawyer. I would have been great at it. But, you know, I, I do pay attention to that. I, I think something else might be going on. From Israel, well, welcome. Welcome, Sharon. Are you a collector? Good evening as well. Yeah, my eye is back to normal. I, actually, one of my eyes has a spot, not like a sty, but there's a big red mark where it's all scratched up, and I ripped out one of the, one of the um, eyelashes was ripped out, and it's all like kind of buggy still. But other than that, my eyes are fine. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, and as Annie said, I don't, I, I don't, I know that the one was the head of all of global security for the company. Hey, Richard, haven't seen you around in a while. How are you doing this evening, Richard? No, you are a busy man. I know you got other things going on, as we've talked before. Angelo, how are you doing this evening? Good to have you on for your first shot there. Hopefully you are doing well also. Vintage Planet, hello. You're fine, Annie. I, I just... I know one of them was global security only because as a I, I took uh, internet security safety I have a, I have a security uh, cert I, I pay attention to the the security guys only because I was curious on what someone in that position would get I have a I have a couple friends that are higher up in some companies and I'm always curious on what what happens if you do certain things just curious um, I look into stupid stuff that people think would be a waste but that's just me. We haven't got the Ziffs in Australia. Well, sorry to hear that. I, yeah, but I think you have you had um, an unlimited package. I somebody sent me it. Well, I had a couple of people send me screenshots of the package deal. I guess I could have looked to myself, but they offered some information on um, the. Uh, there's like a unlimited package. I think in England it used to be 695 pounds. I think I don't know what that equates to in U.S., but that was comparable to paying for a year at a time with eBay's um, package deal. I think eBay's package deal was, what, $2,999 a year for, what was it, 150,000 listings uh, uh, over for that whole year time, something like that. Um, again, so, I mean, we were looking, just tempted almost to do another package deal until eBay did the zips here for us. Amazon Seller 99, how are you doing? Good to see you in as well. Uh, being oil, I would like to ask what is more important to you, the input number of listings, dollar amount to the output, sold items. I'm not really getting what your gist is. I, I don't compare or worry about you know how many I'm getting up, so to speak. I could, I've could i got three listings that we've had for a very long time, and I mean a long time, years, and they generate us a lot of money from three single listings, so quantity doesn't mean anything in my book. I go quantity because I've got employees and I can list the stuff that I sell quantity in bulk and is easy to list stuff. It's stuff I can get easily and, and uh, one of our employees can list, geez, we've been playing around trying to time it and stuff. I listed in 30 minutes like 26 listings. Again, it's two photos each and there was stuff I didn't have to zoom in on. Front, back, uh, same category, didn't have to change anything but a couple words in the title. 
prices were almost the same for everyone. And it was an easy list. So it depends on what you're listing and stuff like that. I only mess with, with certain things like, again, because bulk works for us. I can sell a ton of $10 items as opposed to selling, you know, a ton of high dollar items. I can't get a ton of high dollar items every day of the week. So our bread and butter, what can routinely sells are a ton of cheaper items. And with the categories we sell in uh, today, I'll, I'll give you a real life example. We had some die cuts and I, I talk about people buy stuff um, before the season. So we're selling stuff that people are going to make in the next month and a half They've been buying it like mad. They've been buying the same stuff. There's like six people who buy these specific types of die cuts from us, and they'll make something out of them. And they're all in California, believe it or not. Every one of them, every package, there's six different people. All of it goes to California. Not the same area or anything else like that, but they're going to do stuff with them. So they're buying, one of the ladies today bought 12 or, I think it was actually 13. I think I had to send one separately, but she bought like 12 or 13 ones, 197 bucks just to her. Two other people bought in the 12 to 15 items all at one purchase. And for me, that's the stuff that's all bread and butter. It's not expensive each one, but I got nothing into it and it's bought in bulk. It's stuff that I can separate and put a few in this lot, a few in that lot. So I can make a whole bunch of lots. We made, geez, we had 150 invested into this purchase. We made almost 600 lots. No exaggeration. You can look at the numbers. We're on like X623, I think, maybe, or somewhere in that range on those listing groups. Uh, that, that listings, all the ones that are X that I have listed up, we got 150 bucks into. It's just sheets and stuff I tore apart, put in little lots, and separated them out. Some of them are damaged. I haven't got rid of the damaged stuff. Even damaged. I didn't even bother to repair it. I just sold it as it was and we got a real good return on the investment thousands um again i don't really care quantity i'm only worried about the bottom line and again i'm not even worried about how many items they're selling i'm only wor worried about a dollar amount the other thing i need to say is if you're only doing ebay you're not in the same range you're not you can't don't compare yourself to me or somebody else i do a bunch of stuff and we've got revenue that flows in from well basically 10 sources i'll say nine all the time and a tenth one that's on a fairly regular routine. And that's not counting like one-off sales here or there, like to a Patreon or, or something like that. So I, I don't look at like just eBay numbers anymore. I got to look at the, the bottom bottom line here. What did my whole business do for a specific time? I used to always worry about getting so many things up, just bombard this, bombard that. In the last two days, I'll just give you a, a full-fledged number. I would say around 276 listings were added to our inventory in the last two days, last 48 hours. That's probably typical if I've got three people working in that time frame. Um, again, I'm not worried about if I only got 50 listings up, but they were good items that would sell really well. I wouldn't be caring at all either. Um, one other question, too, I get when I talk about employees, they're paid by the hour. That plain and simple they're paid by the hour if you pay an employee per per item or whatever you want to do per listing or however you do it if they don't do enough listings to hit minimum wage and you don't pay them the difference you're in violation of a federal law so you've got to at least pay an employee minimum wage bottom end you can't pay them nothing under that and the next thing i will get is somebody contradicting me and saying that um a server in a restaurant only gets 213 an hour or whatever the case may be that is true, but if they don't make enough in tips to earn minimum wage, that store, 100%, because I worked in restaurants for years, we had to pay them the difference. So if we were slow that day, their 213 was bumped up to, to minimum wage at the end of the shift. Just FYI, you can't pay them under minimum wage. So I just pay a flat rate. I just gave our employees a 75 cent raise just the other day. Um, and that's like the third raise for some of the ones that have been here just even a year at this point. And I try to be fair and decent with what we do, but I don't do VAs, virtual assistants. I don't do any of that. Everything is controlled here in-house by us. And, you know, I can verify what goes on. I can, you know, there's no funny business going on or anything like that. It's people I can trust, um, people that have been friends for years with the kids and stuff. So, again, everybody doesn't have that opportunity. I'm just in a very good spot with that ability uh you know and employing your kids is not not a problem either we they're on our payroll with my kids you know again we have an accountant and we have somebody who files or taxes i pay workman's comp and unemployment i play all the stuff 
full-fledged accountant and you know all the work so I, I do have a fee and a percentage I have to pay to our accountants and they do some other stuff for us as well too you know we have a lawyer that we deal with as well too for stuff obviously doing toys and well not adult toys I should say like the the uh, casting and stuff like that too so anyway when these are ready they'll be really reasonable too if anybody does want one um, they're fairly realistic. Again, I carved that myself, so it's it, I like that kind of stuff. I know most people probably don't, but that's my my personal thing. Um, I know that's a long about way being oil on answering that, but that's my best explanation there. Bottom line is all that really matters. If I had one item and I made what I did, if I had twenty thousand items up, I'd rather just sell one item, you know. But that's not that life for me. Uh, let me pop on down here. Oh, somebody's asking on Ziff. I'm sorry. Yeah, zero insertion fees. That's exactly right. Uh, yeah, eBay's got Ziff written on. Um, I read every single page they published on that. Just I wanted to when I first saw it, I thought that was a temporary thing for the the um, pandemic, but it, it's it's embedded in there into there now. My other assumption, at some point, they'll, they'll be able to start increasing the price again if they want to get some money. So if at the, their uh, gross merchandise uh, volume goes down or something like that, I bet you the prices will start to go up little by little by little. doesn't take but a dollar or two to each person across all of the amount of sellers they have to uh, get a millions and millions of dollars of, of increased revenue just by doing something like that. And again, with eBay giving away these zips, I think it's for propaganda as well as um a community community liaisons kind of thing like they're reaching out and trying to show that they're doing something helpful to help people that's that's my opinion i believe it's a pr thing um i'm fine if that's what it is either way but it, i truly and honestly believe it's a pr thing nothing that comes out of executives offices or anybody who works for uh, um, public relations or anything like that is just speaking free will. They're just, they're speaking on behalf of the company may not even be their opinions or feelings, but they're speaking what they were told basically to speak. Cause that's their job. I, again, a, a position like that, their duty legally wise would, would be to defend and to promote uh, the company. And, you know, I don't have a problem with them doing that. I'm just not going to be part of it. Did everyone get their free T-shirt from eBay? I don't think. Maybe I did. I don't remember. If you're talking about the the local meetups, no. I, I, I know I got a bumper sticker and a gift card, like a $20 gift card and a bag of stuff and some stickers. I don't remember all what I got. Maybe even some cups or something. They sent us a box. Um, I know I signed up for that event that they have coming up, but I'm not going to do it. I don't care to upload photo of me and anything else. I don't really, I'm not going to spend my time on it. I don't, it's not going to bring any revenue in. And that's all I'm worried about right now. I, hour or two hours, I don't care. I'm, I'm more like a revenue based, just like the eBay open. I was going to go to the one here in Detroit only because it's here and I could have done some business in Detroit with somebody that I regularly buy from the same day and could have killed two birds. So it wouldn't have been out of my way. You know, and it's the only reason I was going to do it. And it was only for hours and stuff. I didn't have to rest spending the night. I would never, ever spend money to fly and get a hotel to go to any event like that for any company ever. You know, unless it's like um, Comic Con or Dragon Con or um, New York Toy Fair for my own promotion of business. That's a totally different story. That would be a business endeavor as opposed to going and listening to a bunch of people talk. That's just me. Whenever I've worked somewhere, I've always aggravated when they sent us off. I worked for, um, when I was with Applebee's as a general manager, they made us go to Destin, Florida. I know people say, well, they made you. I'm a family person. We had a small child, just born not too long before that. My wife was, you know, I'm going to be stuck home alone. And I think we only had one car. I think something happened to the car or something. And they forced me to go to Destin for, um, I think it was four days. And I didn't, I didn't care to hang out with all the folks. They were all basically alcoholics and that wasn't me, you know, so nothing wrong with drinking or something. These people were, were teetotal and drunk the whole time. Uh, there was people falling down in meetings. This was for a regional Applebee's. The place I worked for owned, I think, 57 Applebee's at that time in three different states. And I, I'm just not into that anymore. I mean, I was a hard partier back in my day after my father died when I was a kid. And, you know, I try to stay away from that. I'm, you know, I can't say I'm clean and sober, but, you know, I'm, 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 I moderate what I do these days. I'm not like crazy off the chain like I used to be, but 
I'm, I, I'm going to be posting. I got to, uh, again, this is off topic for just a second here. Um, everybody has life stories or has done stuff. And again, this has nothing to do with reselling. I wrote, I've had a novel that I've written for quite some time that's been sitting here. And I have, I'm going to post a chapter of it in the Patreon page, just FYI. This is, it's a true story. Um, may not be everybody's taste, but it's a true story um, about teenage years. So anyway, if anybody's interested, there's going to be a novel. Um, I'm still shopping around with that. So anyway, if somebody wants to see it, it's a, a complete chapter in that book. It's not the first chapter. It's a random chapter, but it's a complete novel that or book, whatever you want to call it. I don't know the difference between what you would definitely consider a novel versus a book. I don't, I don't know what, where the line is drawn. Uh, let's see here. So I guess they're sending out something else. I got something like a month or six weeks ago from them for the other event um, because they canceled it completely. I got a shirt and stickers. Laugh out loud. Hey, Mary, how are you doing this evening? Mark Walsh, how are you doing as well? A six ounce tumbler. I would have probably used that. The tumblers are pretty cool. Can't beat that at all. Uh, let's see, which is not enough coffee. Yeah, my wife loves coffee. Uh, we, we usually we go to the mall, and we haven't done it in ever. My wife uh, loves the Godiva, and we usually go by, and she's got the Godiva card. I, we finally broke down and, and made sure they sent her a nice... I bought her a huge box of Godiva chocolate, because she's missed like a whole year almost, it seems like. But her pet peeve is she loves Godiva in Starbucks. She's a big Starbucks fan. The co we don't go to the store. She buys the home. She, uh, we don't spend six bucks on a coffee. I'm sorry. Nobody here does that. Yeah, I'm not doing the event. I'm not going to waste my time. Yeah, I would have probably kept an eBay mug. Marty's saying the same thing. <laughs> Mary got like six sheets of stickers if anyone wants any. I wonder if it's going by volume you're doing, um, because again, if if you saw your login pages, they were telling you your first item sold and stuff going back years and years and years and years. Hey, West First Books, how are you doing this evening? I thought that thing tomorrow was a conference, but apparently it's just three hours of parties. Again, that's exactly why I'm not going to mess with it. I don't. I don't like being drawn away from my business unless there's a business aspect of it's going to gain me something from it. Again, I would if if eBay didn't open here in town, I would go, um, but I'm never going to travel or spend the money for something like that. Why would I spend thousands of dollars just to go and hang out? And even just for a video aspect of it, you know, I don't know what somebody gets out of out of that. I know you get to see people and stuff, but. I'm not a super social person in real life. I know I'm on here talking, but there's nobody in the room with me unless the wife pops down or one of the kids is here. But I'm, I'm just, I'm more business. My my brain these days is, is so focused on business and whatever numbers I can pull out. The last couple of days videos talking about site um, uh, statistics and stuff, man, I've been digging into that for some various reasons here. It's it's really important when when I worked for brick and mortar when I let's say Einstein Brothers, I helped them open up new stores, as you know training staff as the management staff and we picked locations. Um, I I was there when we put deposits down and signed checks and stuff for for the initial purchase on property or or the initial payment on a lease for you know a million dollar building. So I I know the aspect of what they were doing for it. You got to dig in if you're going to spend some time and effort to market certain things like the toys, like the Trilobite and stuff. I have an opportunity for someone to pick it up for us. So I'm I'm weighing my options right now and stuff like that. Whatever you're doing, I don't care what it is. If you found some cool item to sell on Amazon, look up the numbers, look up, you know, keyword searches and SEO every the heck out of it, especially if it's like a wholesale deal where you're going to be selling a lot of them. There's there's a lot to this, but it, it once you figure out the, the easier way and, and statistical-wise, the math that works for you, that's a big plus for me. Um, 
you know, you can look at competitor data. You can look at, you know, category data. For even on eBay, you can figure some of that stuff out, too. There are services you can pay for, and we do pay for some services that give us nothing but information. Um, there's more to everything. But the better, the more information you know about something, the better you're going to do. I mean, it's, it's just a given. The more you know, the more you're going to make. I, I will challenge anybody to that. If you just don't want to learn anymore, you know, that's one story. What, I want to just shout out one more thing here. Uh, if, if I leave a comment to somebody, what, what always seems to happen is someone says I'm narrow-minded because I don't agree with their, their sight on an issue. Narrow-minded doesn't mean I don't agree with somebody. Narrow-minded means I don't try it and don't have any faith whatsoever. And I'm not going to go into the definition of narrow-minded, but... If we're talking about something that I tried, I physically went out and tried it, that's not being narrow-minded. That's me going by the evidence that I saw from multiple tests on whatever activity that, that's in discussion at that time. If I don't agree with you, it doesn't mean I'm narrow-minded. It just means that I don't see any benefit or plus from doing whatever we're talking about. So narrow-minded doesn't mean what I guess people think it means. So anyway, narrow-minded means that I don't try it. I'm not going to go out. I, I'm so narrow, I wouldn't even think about touching it. I try every single thing out there. If it doesn't work for me, I don't do it. End of story. And I don't just do it once, and I don't just conjecture. I try to compare math again I, I look at numbers statistically speaking does it actually do something when i do one thing or when i don't do that thing which one works which one doesn't compare like to like things and off you go just fyi again i i, I don't sell what everybody else does so you know if this person on youtube does it this way or talks about this or talks about that i only talk about what i know or what i do you know I, i'm not gonna quote you know buy this or do that if i don't do it or i haven't done it there's just no sense in messing with stuff that I don't do. So anyway, let's go back to the, some, some comments and questions here. Um, Dean, how are you doing? Confused? I'm not sure what you're confused on. Um, hang on. I, I bumped my own feed this time. Uh, boy, my feed's back all over again. Okay, hang on just a second here. Uh, hang on, almost there, down to the sticker stuff. If they're just getting it, I think what Annie said, they got it yesterday or something. If if you're just getting it, maybe they're behind on mail. Maybe, again, mail's running behind on something. Yeah, if you're, if you're talking about managed payments, it's basically you're paying the same amount. That's again why at Mercari, it's it's now it's very obvious that that was going to happen, and and Poshmark's high enough now that that's no big deal in my opinion. I don't think they'll touch the prices. Any of the smaller ones, and and again for Mercari, the majority of their clients are in Japan, and they've been on that site for four or five years, and they're doing doing well. The U.S. market is an add-on, so I think even if they lose a bunch on the U.S. aspect of it, they're going to gain so much more in money for the processing fees for the Japanese users on the site, which again is the majority of the people on all of, of, of um, Mercari. So anyway, that's just my take on that. Uh, again, money comes into play, and then somebody gets money hungry, and then they add on fees like that. 3% fee overnight is a pretty good chunk of change. I also was told that you used to be able to... What was it? Was that the same site? No, I don't want to misspoke. I'll have to look at my notes before I talk about that other aspect. Um... Now Mary's saying she had good customer service. Go look at go look at the Better Business Bureau. And then I thought, well, let's see what eBay has. Macari's um, amount of complaints I think was more than eBay's, and they're like tiny. And it was just U.S. complaints because the Better Business Bureau is only for that 26% of U.S. users from all of the users on the site. So it's a horrible number if you're comparing eBay to to that because eBay had like 700 and some odd. And then I think um, Macari had 1,750 cases that were opened against them with the Better Business Bureau. And eBay had like some small number. It was, it was really kind of stark differences. You got to look at the volume. 
the numbers aren't aren't the, the big factor. The, the part of the factor is that Macari is tiny, a tiny, minuscule aspect of what eBay is like. 145th, I think, is what we figured out the other day of eBay. Tiny, but they have a hair more in complaints than eBay does at their massive size. So that's the judge that I look at. Again, I, I've used the Better Business Bureau. They got us our money back from Big Orange Tire in, in Orlando back in the day. Uh, we, the next step would have had to have been for us to go to court. They saved us court fees and everything. And they shelled out. It was like $895 plus the Better Business Bureau got them to cover our hotel for the time we got stuck in Ocala. It was, it was a long, drawn-out or, ordeal, too. Yeah, Etsy's not so bad. I don't have much problems with Etsy, in all honesty. Again, I, I buy from there as well, too. I'm a buyer and a seller on Etsy, and I appreciate Etsy, honestly. There's some stuff that I couldn't got anywhere else except on Etsy. If you do Victorian recreations of Christmas ornaments, the best place to get the the uh, zigzag tinsel um, wiring and stuff is on Etsy. It's all over the place. Crinkle wire, that's what it's called. Um, that's my favorite source for any of that stuff. And we got favorite vendors that we go to on Etsy for stuff like that. Buy low, sell high. How are you doing this evening? Etsy, Etsy is a different flavor than than eBay. And all. it's like getting the gist on the best stuff to sell on Poshmark versus eBay. There's certain things that sell much better, from what I've been told, on Poshmark rather than eBay because of the the demographics of the crowd buying them. Etsy is similar to that. There's people that will only buy from Etsy, even if there's something similar on eBay that may even be a little bit cheaper because they don't like the whole aspect of eBay and they've been on Etsy for years. I have no complaints on Etsy other than the, the forced free shipping logic and, and that kind of stuff. It's still a doable site. I, I, I'll agree with Carl. I don't, I don't have much issues with Etsy in all honesty. Uh, yeah, and as Carl's saying, his sales pay his taxes. I mean, it's basically, it's, you know, 20 cents for four months. So it's like the five cent fee you're paying while well, we were paying on eBay. So we're selective on what we put on there. Obviously, you can only sell certain things on the site in the first place. So, you know, I'm in the craft and that, the artsy kind of stuff in, in, in general. So for me, it's a perfect fit. You know, there's a bunch of other art sites that we mess with occasionally, too. Vintage Planet, I'm doing well on Etsy as well. Hey, Charles, how are you doing this evening? Good to see you in. I've tried a few times and don't seem to be able to crack the code on there. With with that, Kathy, my best experience, is if you list a bunch of stuff to start with, you know, a couple hundred listings at least, I think it gets your 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 a big enough reach to at least draw somebody in there. At least that's my take on it. Now, I don't pay the extra for, you know, advertising or any of that junk either or anything. Hey, Bob, how are you doing? You are not using some sites. Which ones are you using? Which are actually worthwhile other than Amazon and eBay? Etsy, Walmart's pretty decent. Obviously, Amazon. I do the hit platforms now, which there's three of those. Um, we, we're on like a deviant art sideline, too. I've got a couple art sites we do stuff on. I'm on Discogs. Obviously, we make money off affiliate links and stuff like that as well, too, but not much. Um, well, I'll have to take that back. In the last couple of months, somebody keeps buying like their whole business supplies through my links. So it, it's some horrendous amount of money is, has shown up in our affiliate link. I mean, I'm, it's a lot. I mean, the one month, it was like $800. Somebody bought so much stuff that we got $800, and usually we get like pennies. And I, I don't mean penny pennies, but I mean it's just minuscule. It's not enough to even buy a McDonald's meal for the family for the whole month, just FYI. But lately, I don't know, you know, maybe someone's trying to be gracious. I don't know. It was a surprise. I even had to bring it up with Dom because I was like, you know, I was puzzled. I thought it was a mistake the first time I saw it. Hopefully that answers that, Bob. Etsy can be tough. I I personally think the ones that have been on for the longest do the, the best, even if they don't have a ton of listings on. I still think there's something tied to loyalty not like in a personal loyalty aspect, but the fact that they've been tied into this system so long that there's more feelers for certain sellers versus certain other sellers. Now, let me just shoot one other thing out here. And I, I, I told you I'd come back around to this, and we'll get back to some more uh, comments. I don't even know what time it is, actually. 
Now, those of you who have been paying attention, I've we were on Ink Frog and we're all, we're Shopify. We've postponed it. I was going back and forth and leaving it open in, in the whole works and stuff. Somebody else told me to keep track of my sales a couple days before I, I do it if I'm going to turn it off temporarily with Ink Frog and then see what the sales happen. At, and we're talking eBay sales and see what happens after that. Well, I did that. And the minute, I mean, within an hour or two of me shutting off the API, and I went back in. If you discontinue service on like a channel um, advisor or any of those kind of services, don't just end it from the site. Go into eBay, go into site preferences, and then go into third-party access down at the bottom and unclick that box. So just signing off on that this the page you're dealing with won't end it or may not end it. And um, so I click it off there. The minute I... Within an hour, my sales jumped up like 30%. I don't know. Again, I have no verifiable way to say that that's definitely what it is, but somebody else had the same basic experience that I fairly well trust his, his comments. I believe the guy very, very explicitly. That leaves me to an assumption, which I won't be able to ever prove. That, again, this is my, my opinion, that there could be them flagging accounts that have API hookups to other sites so that they will get less views on eBay. I don't, it's possible they're doing it. I don't know what they'd get out of that because if the person leaves the site, they might take all their listings with them. Maybe there's some other aspect. Maybe it's some legacy thing that's built in. I don't know, but there's a possibility that they may penalize people who hook up APIs through channels where their merchandise may be sold on several platforms. I showed out in another video like a month ago, eBay still has a statement that you cannot sell. And again, this is in there. Right? It's in that video. You can see it, that you can't sell an item that's on eBay on another platform. Again, this is a carryover. They haven't changed the, the textual statements in a lot of their policies still. Some of them, they've just eliminated all the wording, and it's just some blanket, you know, basic statement that could mean anything. Um, that's usually the route they're going. But, uh, you know, recently, eBay still was saying you couldn't list something on another site. So technically, if that still is part of the process, the policy, them allowing us to do it kind of defeats the whole purpose of that statement. So anyway, again, I don't can't prove that. I have no idea if that's true. But somebody told me beforehand, and it it's what happened. Take it as you wish. You know, I more so turn it off to see if that would happen. In all honesty, because it's only a matter of clicking a button, and then you can repopulate. And we're gonna just push out from Ink Frog in January anyway. So it's not gonna change a whole lot. Um, I do own all of my listings, though, photos and everything at this point still, so I'm not really worried about that. Um, just FYI. I just thought that was a little interesting that that happened. Um, let's see here. First 200 listings free per month and then 35 cents per listing. Isn't that higher than now? I'm not sure what you're referring to, Jay uh, Marley. Uh, let's see here. I do have some lots of things I want to put there for crafting, but not confident. Yeah, Pinterest can be a big plus, and that's part of the reason I don't do a ton more. I don't uh, prop out stuff from Inst uh, Etsy. I just don't like to waste the time on it. And as long as you got the right stuff on there, you can sell some stuff. And again, like with Carl talking about it, we get a certain chunk coming in from whatever we're on. And I don't worry about it, honestly. It, it, as long as the site's making me money and I don't have time or over a certain amount of time investing it, I'll still shoot it out there. A thousand extra bucks every six months or a hundred dollars extra a month times 12, you know. And you got nothing invested into it. I'm fine with that. As long as it's a routinely uh, steady flow of at least something coming in. I, uh, let's see. Unicorns don't lie. Upgraded to a premium store to get the extra listings. Prior to eBay giving away free listings. Now I'm stuck in a year contract paying more for the more expensive store that has no advantage. Contact eBay. Unicorns don't lie. Go through eBay business if you don't have um, phone access. They're letting a lot of people out. I've had dozens of people tell me that they were able to drop back down and explain that it was hurting them financially and with the pandemic and the whole works that it would be better for you to and safer for your family to not be paying that higher amount. 
that would be my take on on what to do with that I, I could give you you could look down some of the videos that i talk about that and you can see there's probably dozens of people down there some people have even reached out to us to ask us that same question as well Fourteen point three five percent on total. The percentages. Now I don't know if those are correct. I don't have my chart thing in here, and I don't think it's that high. But the percentages that one person pays may not be what somebody else pays. If you've got bad feedback or had some issues, your fees are going to be higher in managed payments. It's they just sent out something on that, um, and it depends on the category you're selling in there. They've got some really low ones, like guitars have like almost nothing on them for it. Again, it just depends on the category. Um, I don't, I don't have a, access to another, I don't want to reach around and get another, uh, laptop going, but. Hey, Eduardo, how are you doing? I haven't had a single chance. I need to get you a, there's a few Weebles things I was going to send you, see if you can acquire them for me. Eduardo's one of our patrons, but he's got a massive store for, um, replacement toy parts. And I mean massive. He's probably one of the biggest ones that I've seen the inner workings on. Um, it's got a lot of parts. A lot of parts. Yeah, and just like Annie's saying with that, see, if you don't pay attention and work it, the sales are going to drop down. That, that's, that's for sure. Part of the reason I didn't want to deal with Poshmark, not just because I'm not a clothing person, but I, I don't like all the sharing and all that other junk with it. With eBay, I just put them up and pretty much forget about it. That's that's what I do. I like its passive income. It's better, well, of course we do sales and stuff, but that's not really the same thing. So I just do those in bulk and click a few buttons and I'm done. I don't like where I have to share individual listings because it's a time waster for me. And I don't care if something sits we were talking a minute ago, somebody asked a question on the volume of how many items I have up. With having a lot of items up, I can afford to, you know, not worry about rushing to sell anything because once you have enough decent items up, a set amount pretty much sells on a routine basis constantly. I mean, I, I'm literally constantly. I can almost set my watch by a dollar amount. I do projections, so I kind of keep track and where the dollar amounts are going. And we were doing some phenomenal days. Yesterday alone, we were up 435 bucks up. So, true number. That's an honest number. 435 bucks up. Not typical that much, but you know I'm going to take it because it's been just rolling in left and right. My my bank account's looking pretty sweet right now, from the standpoint of me, the other night just thinking about where we were, five, six, seven, eight, ten years ago. It has hopefully somebody has seen the movie Cinderella Man. Hope anybody knows Cinderella Man. I hope you hope you do. It's a boxing movie. Now I'm not a sports person, but Cinderella Man I own. It's it's a very one of my top favorite movies. There's a scene in there where he's he's boxing. I think he's in the ring, um, Braddock, Jim J. Braddock, and he he's he's about ready to get knocked out. He's all suffered, and and what's going through his mind are his kids and food on the table and and it's those are the things that motivate me is more worried about my kids i'm not dreaming about getting a lamborghini or something like somebody else would like um what's that movie um wolves of wall street i've never seen it we watched 10 minutes of it and i had to turn it off but um i'm more of the jim j Dr uh, braddock type of person who really just worries about the family issues i don't really care about fancy anything yeah i really look fancy so i'm that's just me i don't care i'm a big nerd at heart and i don't care about any of that stuff <clears throat> unicorns don't lie i only have a starter store but i get 50 listings more than a free account that's a bummer ebay makes no sense to me you're probably not in managed payments would be my guess jay yeah and I, if you're in managed payments the, the there's a different structure versus non-managed payments so I don't know where you're... I'll have to look at the numbers again. I know I have them in one of my videos. I haven't memorized it at the top of my head. I, I checked them for the first month or so and haven't had any issues, so we let it go with that. Hang on here. Now let's pop back over to um, reselling site fees again since we're talking about fees and structure of it. Now when you look at expenses, again, overall expenses, and you think about the money you're making. Now if you're not making a lot of sales on eBay, this this is tough to, to look at from this standpoint, but 
when you got a certain amount of revenue coming in from selling on the platform and the fees are the way they are now, you're actually coming out pretty darn good in my book. I'm paying, obviously I'm still paying for an anchor store because that's my, my personal call with the phone support and all, $300 a month. And we've got, in the one store alone, it's $300 per anchor store. The one anchor store we've got, I think we're up to 26000 49, I think, or something like that. I think that was the last figure I looked at in listings. And that's for that $300 for all those listings. That's a phenomenal uh, amount of money to pay for, or not cost-wise. That's, that's phenomenally cheap in my book for the amount of exposure, for the amount of listings that I have up there. Yeah, I know there's a final value fee when they sell, but unless they sell, I'm not paying that. If I had to, let's say, rent a big booth in an antique mall, I wouldn't get maybe a 50th of the traffic that I get on eBay. And the price would probably be about the same amount of money. And that's just me renting a couple of booths, which we used to do in antique malls. I was in several antique malls at the same time. Uh, the, the cost is, is half of what I used to spend on renting antique mall booths. Half, more than half. And I'm selling 40 times that, what I was doing in the antique booths. That's the only alternative that I'm used to. So maybe if you're new to reselling in general, you might think that's it's a lot of money for what we pay. I started in the olden days when things were totally structured differently. I'm still, I, I, there was no eBay when I first started in the collectibles. So, you know, you you paid those fees. That's how you got into setting up. If you set up at to sell at even at a flea market, some of them are 125 bucks for a weekend deal at a big extrap. Some of them are four or five hundred dollars. One of the ones I went to, and this was a, a high end one, was almost a thousand dollars for a three day event. Now, mind you, we we sold a lot of money, but it, that was a thousand bucks just to set up. So you, you equate that to online selling and the amount of traffic the site gets again that's why that traffic means so much to me that's why it, it's drilled in my head that you've got to pay attention to all those numbers where are they going is the traffic up is the traffic down is this site good is that site good what are the other key factors going on is google payments is what they're doing is managed payments worth it are they getting some traction from adding new stuff new new purchasers from using different ways of paying and yes you can see that in yesterday's video so again that's why i put that in there because Google Payments wasn't an option. Why would eBay direct you from eBay to Google Payments if it wasn't an option? It wasn't on that list. So they are drawing in some different folks to the site. So again, they're, they're somewhat logic to some things, but again, PayPal is still predominantly what people pay for, even with managed payments, because they can just click a couple buttons and you're still paying with PayPal. Anyway, let's slide down here. I think my feed's all over again. Yeah, I think my feed's off again. Let me reload the page. It's off on the other one because everything's frozen again. Hopefully everything is still playing okay. If you haven't hit the like button, please hit the thumbs up. <clears throat> I got 154 people in the house, and from my end, it looks like 58 likes. Yeah, I $1,000 for a weekend is the, at a flea market or a trade show. It was extravaganza. Um, Carl, you'd probably know like Webster's, they did the, um, what's it called? It starts with an A or S H E. I can't think it's a traveling show that goes from like state to state. Oh, geez. I'm sure, you know, they, they did them in Mount Dora. We did one in Mount Dora and it was almost a thousand bucks. They where they took over the whole town of Mount Dora. Yeah, fees, I know I get hate when I say that, but fees on eBay are, are not that bad at all. I couldn't do this any other way this cheap, no matter what. There's no way on earth I could do it this cheap and get as many views and get as many sales. If, if I went into a store, how many people are going to buy something from England in a store sitting in Ohio somewhere? It's not going to happen. You know, so I'm, I'm looking at it from old school vision. Again, if you're just popping on and, and you've never dealt with you know how it used to be or anything like that, you may think it's high, but it's not high at all. It's not high at all. Like, take a grocery store, for an example. In a grocery store, the food stuff, like produce, if they're lucky, they're making a penny or two on any piece of produce in that store, you know, because of loss and damage and all the other stuff that goes into it. But it's, it's, it's a requirement to have, even if they're not making money on it, because you wouldn't be a grocery store without produce. There's things that stores carry, in some cases, where they don't make any money, they're actually losing a few dollars. When I worked for Pilot, the, the national... Um, truck driving gas stations, 
they would lose money in some of the states in the middle of the country because there's nothing around there, but they were required to, like with a J.B. Hunt contract or something, they were required to have stops every so many miles so that any of their trucks could get, uh, you know, whatever they needed at one of the establishments. So they lost money on the gas because it cost more to get the gas there than they could sell it for because of contractual prices that that company had with them. J.B. Hunt being one of the bigger ones in the country. Swift, some of the other ones had some big deals too, but... Um, I like the old school vision too. I'm sorry, but that's that's where I grew up on, honestly. And and I I keep to those thoughts because it has done us extremely well, business wise. I don't change any of what we're doing based. I, I use that skills, and that that's what I I lock everything. And I don't just change something unless it it meets the criteria for what I did back in the day, because it helps me. It does does do very well. Again, that's that's my take on it. You know, I'm I'm not complaining about our business at all. I know there's people out there that aren't having sales or something else like that, but we've strayed away from stuff that we don't sell. You know, and end of story. My sales are doing extremely well, and I'm not trying to brag. It's just just what's going on. It's just just the facts of the matter. You sell certain things, you get sales. I sell things that people have expendable income to buy. The stuff that I sell, people don't need. Probably 90 90 percent, maybe not quite, maybe 85 percent of what we sell is stuff that nobody in their right mind even needs. So it's stuff that everybody has extra money to buy in the first place, and they're still buying it because, again, they're not affected by the, what's going on. They have better, uh, whatever the job they have, they make a lot of money, they're retired, whatever the case may be. Pirate and Loves operates on volume. That is very, very true. Um, yeah, and it's a national thing. That's why I say... The, some businesses lose money on certain items just because they make so much somewhere else. It doesn't matter. It, it's 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 like giving away free things to get somebody in a store just to get them to buy something else. Like giving away a free uh, coffee if you come in a store and buy something else. You know, it's it's perceived value. Uh, let's see here. I'm sorry, I missed some sections. Uh, I had trouble switching to manage payments in this. This made it finally got me signed up. <clears throat> yeah, I thought about that too on the taxes. I don't. I haven't got a notice from the state yet on what they paid for um, sales tax either. That's what I'm worried about because um, I, I. My guess is I'll probably get a notice saying I didn't file. My accountant already asked me on that. Um, where's the numbers? And I says, well, eBay's doing it. So I don't have any numbers to give them. Hang on just a second. Let me pop up because I, I re reload it. Well, Frank, Frank Z, thank you very kindly for the $10 super chat. When you buy from antique auctions, do you buy online or are you present at the auction? Also, do you buy auctions where there are live or online? I, I go to auctions around here live in person. If I can't see it in person, I usually don't buy it. End of story. I know what I'm getting. I've seen too many scammers and things like that. Some of the auction houses will spike auctions and put stuff from like uh, estate sales and mix it and try to make it look like it's old stuff too. I want to see what else is there as well. I don't just buy one thing. I want to know what's going on. Usually the ones around here too will put lot number stickers on them and usually the, the I can tell who's auctioning it off if it's somebody who's auctioned stuff off all the time too. I try to figure out where the stuff came from before I buy something to know if it hasn't been already listed and there's all kinds of other factors. Some of the auctions I've went to, I've looked up stuff, and the exact same item at that auction didn't sell on eBay for a set price. So I'm not going to mess with it either. So look up the stuff at auctions, even locally, to see if it's another seller. When I don't want something, I take it to the same auction that I go to sometimes, too. So that's just my take on it. I, I like to see stuff in person. I don't buy everything in person. Uh, there's some trusted people that I buy straight from, uh, sight unseen. Um, you know, it's just the way I've been working with some of it. It's like buttons and stuff. We got another like 40 pounds more buttons com coming in. I think we're over 300 pounds of uniform buttons right now. Something Somewhere in that number. I totally didn't write down the last lot we got. Hopefully it answers your question there, Frank. I like to see it. Uh, I think I've missed some more. Yeah, now it's reloaded. I'm sorry. My feed froze up on the other laptop. Uh, somebody's congratulating Charles. What did I miss? 
I'm clean and sober 30 years in AA. God is good. Good for you, Charles. I do drink occasionally, but I am not, uh, I'm not one to be teetotaled over the edge. When I post that, um, that chapter in there, I may talk a little bit about my past, just so it is in context with what you'll be reading for those in Patreon, if you're interested. Again, some folks may not be interested, but it, it's something that's going to be published um, for real. So I just thought I'd shoot out a chapter of it. It's copyrighted already. I have an ISBN and the whole work. So just FYI, it's not something I want passed all over the place. Uh, let's see here. Let me smack down here. It's just listing stuff. Well, let's see your smile time gifts. How are you doing? eBay showed me my first item sold. Kind of cool. Retrohead, thank you very kindly for being on as well. Oh, let's see. Chicken fried steak. Well, I'm sure they'll send it out if that's what they're doing for everybody. Let me slap on down just a little more. Yeah, Annie's talking about, too, she took some stuff down and sent them off to the auction. That's what I do with stuff if I don't want to. But I don't, I, if it's up, I keep it up. I never take a thing down online, regardless. I'll just change the price to something really ridiculous if I don't think it's worth messing with. Hey, Steve, how are you doing? Steve Elmore's in the house, too. Good evening. Are you a collector with coins and bullying going away with managed payments? Any suggestions for other sites for selling uh, those items? If I'm not mistaken, and I, I, I haven't looked back into this, I think you can sell coins if they're certified on e or on Amazon, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know. I got some PSA stuff, some stuff at PSA right now. I sent off like $1,000 worth of stuff to get PSA'd. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, it, uh, my opinion on leaving stuff up, if you don't have anything to do with it, it's not going to cost you any time or money leaving it up. Just leave them up. That's, I'm not taking anything down. You know, I just If, if I want to get rid of it, I just run it to an auction for a couple bucks just so I get my money, money back from lists and stuff, and that's it. <clears throat> Most of this long tail stuff is, you know, not, um, I got nothing into it. Uh, other coin sites, though, are you a collector? I've been thinking about that fairly heavily because I've got a, some colonials here I want to sell, and I've got a couple that I had sent in to have them certified as well. I'm still going back and forth with that. My personal opinion is eBay doesn't care if the categories go bye-bye. I know people are going to say, oh, that's crazy. They'd lose too much money. They're getting a ton of money from collecting an extra all that processing fee. So I don't know. They might not care about the, the list fees. They've had over a year to come up with some way to process those type of sales. Again, over a year, well over a year. So they haven't even mentioned it. It's, it's not even been dropped. I haven't seen a single word about those categories at all. So, again, my assumption is they don't want to mess with it. Just like uh, Mercari has a statement that basically says the exact same thing with eBay. Etsy, the whole works. You can't sell certain things on certain platforms. There's no venue. Now, there are some coin-specific sites out there. There's some coin or some bullion sites you can buy and sell and trade on, too. But I'm a little hesitant on some of those. I usually sell our bullion here locally to uh, estate jewelers when I get, want to get rid of stuff like that. But I, I'd get more selling it locally and most of the time than if I mess with eBay and fees and all that other kind of stuff. Personally, that's my take on it. Hey, John, how are you doing this evening? There's Dom right down below. I bought all my flood remodeling stuff through Don's links. Just kidding. Yeah, somebody bought, as I said, like $15,000 worth of like metal stainless steel shelving and stuff. Just, just one item. When I worked for clients, they usually got four hundred dollars a week in affiliate links. I don't, I don't get nothing like that. <clears throat> we 
Well, I got some for people buying those specific things, but it's it's the same person. It's like one or two people, if anything. Uh, here's Marty out, and I think you just hit on something huge. I got Ink Frog in the middle of August, and my views were down twenty five percent for the next month, and this out of nowhere. Yeah, I I can't. I can't prove any of that. That's that's a conjecture. Again, I'm not. I can't unless I can. It's repeatable, and I can verify one account to another. One has it, one doesn't. That's the only way I could be able to say yes for sure. It could just be a coincidence. It could be anything, but it's a little suspicious that somebody warned me that that could happen. You know, again, days in advance before was I was talking with him about it beforehand and write it down. You know, but I always write that down anyway. But I, I don't know if I would have thought about that that could have been a, an issue, but. It was almost like clockwork, so it was really weird that that happened like that, at least from my personal opinion. I've never seen anything like that, uh, an increase like that. It's been steady since. It's not like it just went up one random day and nothing. And I can't see any other differences. There's Again, we're in a different aspect with pandemic, but if I compare year to year over the last three or four years, there is no big jump for us after you know holiday because it's still rolling in at basically the same pace with the steady click up. That's it. Tola, how are you doing? And thank you very kindly for the super chat. Start uh, started selling last November and have gone through many of your videos. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. Well, well, thank you very, very kindly. I do honestly and sincerely appreciate that. Tola, <clears throat> I'm going to butcher your name if I try to pronounce it. Wanda Lowski, hopefully that's at least close. Thank you very, very kindly for that. Stuff like that is, is what helps support the channel and, and allows me to spend the time to do stuff like this. Yeah, I'm not saying to Kathy with we uh, one one month it was like seven eight hundred dollars we got in affiliate links, and the month before that it was like thirty two dollars. Just to give you some straight numbers. That was what it was like. I don't push. It's just sitting in there. I don't push it, and I don't post like links to stuff that I think everybody needs to buy. They're, all the stuff I use is on those pages on there. And I like on the affiliate links, Amazon almost gives nothing now. They dropped it in like a fifth or a sixth of what they used to give you. So I just have an Amazon page that has, it's like an, uh, um, what is it, a influencer page, I guess they call it, but it shows everything I use and only what I use. You can buy it anywhere you want, but it's only there because I constantly get people asking, well, what do you use for this? What do you use for that? It's all there. Some of the links down there are eBay links too, but I'm terrible on marketing and all that stuff because that's not really what I'm, I was interested in. Yeah, I know I could get a lot more money and do this or do that. And I, I've got offers to promote this on my channel, promote that. Some of them are stuff that I might almost use, but if I don't use them, I'm not just going to do a promotion just so I can get the money out of it. If I don't use it, I don't see a big value. I'm not going to do it. Oh, let's see here. Yeah, let me know, Kathy. I don't. I, again, I can't say eBay's doing anything against anybody like that. I I could see it might have been in the system, and nobody who's running eBay now might not even know that that's something that was built in, or it just could honestly be a coincidence. But if everybody looks at it or tries something and they get a similar response, I don't know. That's a little bothersome to me. Again, I don't want to start something if it's not true. I don't know if it's true. I'm telling you straight out. My opinion is that yeah, there could be something to it. it could just be a, a quinky dink. You know, but I'm very prone on that. I, I ran into some issues. For those of you who don't follow what, what Google's doing, if every page isn't a, a secure page, an HTTPS page, even one little aspect like an image on a page isn't secure, Google won't display them after a certain point. They're, they're forcing um, a specific technology on everybody. Um, I'm not going to go into the big details on that, but I've run into some issues where I had some pages blocked for on eBay and on safe and it turned out I went through this I was trying to see if anybody else had similar issues um, but it turned out it was a photo that wasn't secure now the photo where it was originally stored was secure the page everything but that photo was secure but that photo the way eBay was pulling the photo from the one source from the the server it was on to the page that it was displaying there was a, a, a spot where that was not fully secure and I, I, I've can prove it i've got screenshots of it to show exactly what the http showing and the whole work so i can show that it's not working properly on a couple of pages i couldn't repeat it all over the place but those listings that i have the issue with still show up that way so 
that's another issue that, that scares me a little bit. Why would that mean anything, somebody might ask. If that photo isn't secure, somebody could embed something in that photo and then put it there. So if you click to enlarge it or look at that photo, you're clicking on whatever they've embedded into that photo. They could steal that photo, re-upload the photo in, in a matter of moments if that's the case. There's apps that will do stuff like that that you can get off Tor, the, the deep dark web, just FYI. With managed payments, though, uh, smile, time, gifts, I had an increase when we switched over to managed payments. I don't, again, I don't know what everybody else said. I can't prove anything else other than that we did increase. We had quite a few more sales and have since then. I had other ways of people paying would be my, my obviously, assumptions from that. Again, if you watched yesterday's video, you can see that Google Payments is showing up as a viable payment source for eBay now. You know, it's, it's a proven. It's in, the proof is in the numbers. It's there. eBay's directing people to it. Bluegrass Picker, how are you doing this evening? Um, when I attached Shopify for my account and sales dropped and haven't been the same on eBay since, I need to check that API. There's no way to know, I, I can say. And again, I'm not trying to tell everybody to do anything with it. I'm, we're still going to go back to Inkfrog and hook it right back up. I just wanted to shout that out there. Maybe there's some consensus from it. I don't know if there's any truth to that whatsoever. I can tell you what happened. 30% or so, it had a good boost, and it hasn't stopped since. A coincidence. We're listing a lot more, so I, I can't say what the issues is. But again, somebody else said, hey, check it out. I checked it out and exactly what happened. You take it, take it from there. Um, let's see here. Sorry, you didn't get it. Sorry, sorry, Annie. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Galaxy 500 YouTuber said they got banned for having two eBay accounts on one IP address. I don't think he was telling me that that's not the full story. You can have five, six, seven eBay accounts running from the same location. Um, when we first started eBay, some, if you look at some of my videos, you might see at the top of my page uh, my, my um, um, shortcuts. You'll see eBay 1, eBay 2, eBay 3 sometimes on some of them. And sometimes I used to keep a separate laptop for each one because the MAC address was different in each one, and it, I could force a different or a static IP address from that specific location. I don't worry about it at all anymore. I haven't seen any negativity or any issues with eBay for doing that. Now, if you interact with two different accounts and, and try to buy or do anything with the other account, that will get you booted. You could get a lifetime ban for inflating or doing anything from one account and hiding that information. eBay can tell where when you log in and where you're logging in from. Any company can basically get your IP address. Now there's ways to hide it and, and things like that too, but a standard one can be checked. Um, and I've even talked about what eBay does. eBay is scanning your system. One of the only sites that does it, they scan your system and they're checking your ports what ports you're using on your personal laptop, your personal PC, whatever the case may be. It's not against the rules if you've accepted the user game, and if you haven't, there's are some issues with that, as I addressed in another video about that. I would say they're not giving you all the information, though. Yeah, Marty, I, I went in and, and deactivated InkFrog from the settings page, and then I went into site preferences on eBay, and the third-party app um, acceptance or um, approved ones are way down at the bottom. All you got to do is uncheck the radio button next to whichever one you want. Now, if you've got InkFrog and Shopify, it's going to be the InkFrog button and the channel um, what's it called? The channel adapter or whatever it's called. There's two of them you need to kill on that. Just FYI. No problem, Eduardo. I, I liked all the toys. I'm a big toy guy too, as you know. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have a toy show too, don't forget. I talked about that for Christmas. That's a done deal too. Halloween, big Halloween show coming up also. I, I almost want to get my costume out and put it on and do some stuff with it now. Yeah, we've got we've got three stores, so I haven't had a single issue. 
Yeah, if you haven't hit thumbs up, please hit the thumbs up button. I really like to get to that 100 mark before the show ends. I got about 100, 172 people on right now, and we've got on my end, it says 79 thumbs up. I'll see the comment. Yep, Carl. Cinderella Man. I like Jerry Maguire, and I like Cinderella Man. And coincidentally, Zellweger is in both of those movies, which they're both good movies. There's there's a one of my favorite scenes when I first started reselling, and I finally got out of the, the management job, when he's in the car, and he's trying to figure out, Jerry Maguire, and he's trying to figure out what to listen to, and um, Free comes on, or Free Falling by um, Tom Petty. And that's that's how I felt since I've you know, got out of the rat race of corporate America, regional manager spots and stuff like that. Cinderella, though, man, when he says, you know, I'm fighting for milk, that that's just, that, that's a touching movie. That's a very, very good movie on my book. I, I, I recommend anybody who hasn't seen it, sports or not. Again, I'm not a big sports fan, but that's a good movie. I like The Natural. There's a few other movies I like that are sports related. But anyway, one of my all-time favorites is Cinderella Man and Jerry Maguire. Cuba is just awesome in there. Um, Tom Hanks is, is a good actor. I'm not a big fond fan of him after I heard something he said on national TV. But other than that, it has to do with him being a pilot, too, just FYI. Uh, let's see here. Galaxy 500 is moving up. It's very good, very good. Space is important. Yeah, now I'm back down. My feeds are all over the place. I'm sorry. We're bouncing around here. Yeah, they're not going to give us what we need, Carl, on paper, I'm sure. You can get it all, too, but still, I'm still hesitant. Because on PayPal, I could get anything I wanted. Just hands on the column. I always downloaded all the, the uh, monthlies and stuff, complete line-by-line -line breakdowns for everything. And I imported them as a CSV file, and then I Excel them all, and they sit in a book, and I, I literally just link you know one cell to another, and that's where I get my totals from, straight from the PayPal forms. Works perfect. Well, it did. I can't do it anymore. Yeah, we're way off on my feet. I don't know how I got back up there again. Uh, yeah, Marty, same thing. Disney Family 515. Uh, eBay, Amazon are a bargain. I fully agree with that. Um, you know, if you set up back in the old day, too, not only were you paying hundreds of dollars, you were still paying 15 20% of the, whatever you sold the stuff for. So not only were you paying a monthly fee, but you were still paying if you were in a, a good antique mall. The... the Plus was back then there wasn't eBay, so malls did get a lot of more traffic, but still it wasn't anything compared to what they are now, compared to what eBay does for you. I, I honestly wish Mercari or some other platform was a rival for eBay because it would force them to, to do the best they can because there is competition out there. eBay right now doesn't have any competition. Amazon isn't competition. Amazon's so far ahead of eBay, it's not even funny, but they're, they're, they're different models. I'm not dinging eBay for not being as big as Amazon. Ruby Lane's not a competition. That's the only other one that I could say that does decent volume, but not anywhere when it's comparative to, like, eBay. Um, Etsy's a little different. They don't do the same things. They're limited in market. There, There is no competition. I, I, I wish there was. It would help out us, in my opinion. The more competition, the more they would be pushed to do something to win over people. You know, again, I'm... I'm They've gotten a little better in my mind on, on you know what I think about the overall company because of the free listings. Again, that's where money does talk. The fact that they gave up potentially fifteen thousand dollars they'll be giving us every single year if, if it stays the way it is 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 phenomenal. You know, it, it's it's a plus. And again, I know everybody isn't getting that. If you're just new and you're starting off, you don't have all those extra listings. Different story. But we paid five cents a listing for tens of thousands of listings, over and above what the anchor store rate was. So, two ninety nine plus, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars. Our bills, three, four, five, six thousand dollars some months. So you know, or it was. It's not anymore. But it's a totally different different aspect of it. Yeah, Galaxy 500, some of the 100-year-old paper I've sold would never sell in a local store. There wouldn't be enough people that would want it locally. That's my problem. That's why I don't see any benefit whatsoever to being a brick and mortar unless it's to have people bring stuff to you. It's the only thing I can think of. I can't justify doing it. Again, we've talked about buying this and buying warehouse and stuff. We're going to, the next place we have is going to have a big studio slash 
um, outside building attached with it. So wherever we, we buy something, it's going to have our own personal warehouse that we would own. So there won't be any payments. Again, it's the cheapest route to go. Even if we buy like um, a barn and then remodel, I don't know what. We're going to do something. We've been looking here and there lately. And he sold a 100-year-old shrubbery catalog in five minutes. If we if I list something, if I list, we again, I say this all the time, if we list 100 items, 3 to 5% of those always sell. Every single day, the first day we list them. Sometimes it's 20%. Sometimes it's even higher than that. We've listed dozens of things and had them all sell the very first day within hours, especially if it's something really unique or different. Yeah, rent, I would never want to pay rent on something. That's the whole point, too. Let's see here. Hip wise, I do fairly well. Now, this month has been the slowest month I've been on hip, in all honesty. Perceived value is, is key, as Carl, I said that as well, too. Perceived value is 100% part of what we do and, and what works for us. It's like the difference if somebody puts something up at an opening bid 999 and it's something that could go for a couple hundred bucks if there's nobody but one person bidding on it because it's such an oddball item it's only going to go for 999. If I list it at a high 2 300 dollars that person may spend 2 or 300 dollars because he perceives that it's worth that much. There's nobody bidding against them so he might have been able to get it for 999. That's why when I price things I don't I don't always go by what everybody else has them priced at in the comp sales. A lot of people will see two or three items priced at, say, 10 bucks, and they'll keep it in that same range. That item, though, even though three, four, five, even a dozen people could have sold that for 10 bucks, I can come in behind them and put 3450 and then sometimes sell it for 3450 But the majority of the time, I usually sell it for way more than the other people do. Now, if there's a couple hundred of them that sold in that price range, I can't do that. But if there's a limited quantity, you know, a couple dozen, I'm still going to price it high and still probably going to sell for higher than what other people saw it for. It's perceived value. <coughs> if they look at my store, it's all in the same price range. It's all tied together. It, it it's, it's all represents itself well the way it's grouped. I've got multiples in the same category. I, I know what I'm talking about with the items. I know my items. And you know... If you know more than everybody else in the categories you're selling, and you're going to do so much better than everybody else. Knowledge is is literally the truth. Things are only worth what people would be willing to pay for it. Exactly. But you can work in, like why people do 99 cent prices. Instead of $11, $11 they'll do ten ninety nine. It's perceived. It looks like it's less than it actually is. It's only a penny, but, but your mind looks at, oh, it's only 10 bucks. It's not 11 or something along that line. That's the same basic principle. Like if you put $100 versus $9.99 or, $90, or $99.99, you will sell more at $99.99 than you ever would if it was just priced at $100. It's perceived. It's perceived to be cheaper. It's a mental thing. And, and again, I've taken psych classes, so you know that, that plays in the part. And part of my master's um, thesis was literally on uh, perceptions and, and influencing people through music. So, you know, this all plays into that. It's marketing 101. You know, if you take a marketing class, you're going to get a lot of talk on perceived value and, and things that work, things that don't work, and stuff like that, too. So, Yeah, we've got four local live auctions that I like to go to. Carl, I love local live auctions. I don't get to go to as many as I want. And plus, I don't need much inventory right now, so I don't go just because I don't need to jam more stuff in here. We're still... I'm going to be getting rid of some records. For those in Patreon, I have sent out a couple down the list. Some have already been mailed out. Um, I may have some, some record lots um, available to sell. I might sell them if there aren't any other patrons who don't want some still. I may sell them here on the channel to just anybody. I cannot do an online auction like some of the other channels are doing. It's against the law in this state. Even for an online live auction on YouTube, I have to have an auctioneer's permit in this state. So if somebody's in Ohio and doing it, it's against the law if they're doing it here on YouTube from Ohio without an auctioneer's license. I called, and word for word, that's what it says online and says um, if you call the office of the uh, the issuance there for the license. And you have to intern under somebody for like a year 
to get that. And then you've got to call, I think, a dozen auctions to finally get your, your cert here in the state. I'm not going to mess with any of that, just to sell a few things on YouTube like other channels do. Nothing wrong if that's what they do, but there's laws in my state that say I can't do that. I looked. I can't do it. I don't want to be an um, auction barker, though, but I don't mind watching and doing some. Uh, I tried to hit postcards, anything, Kelsey, and it was woeful. Yeah, it depends. I've got thousands of postcards on hip hip platforms. So for us, it's a different story. We do probably, well, we were at 115 on average a month in sales. And the fee to sell on there was, I think we're still paying 499 or 7 something, I think it was, a month. So after all costs and fees were, it's uh, like 100 and some odd bucks I'm making extra every month. Take home. And, but all I do is mail something out, so there's nothing to it. And they take, you know, mark the items sold and stuff. On some months I've done, you know, four times that, but it's worth it to just sit there and let it run for my book. Uh, stamps are pretty good on eBay. I, I don't have problems much on eBay with stamps, truthfully. Um, now, some of the stamp sites are okay, too, but again, you get the same clients on both platforms, and they're just going to go and buy the item from you on the cheapest platform you're selling it on. That's what I see. Hey, Swamp Picker, how are you doing this evening? FIHO Ox, I'm not sure on what your issues with that. I have had no issues sending out a uh, refund, because we always refund the difference on shipping. We keep the the percentage, the final value fee off of that and the 30 cents though, just FYI. We refund the difference. So I don't lose a dime. I don't pay that 30 cents if they're paying for multiple items. Every 30 cents I deduct from the the refund on the shipping if they pay that way. Brittany Wilson, about to go to my first live auction. So excited for the Saturday. Heard it can be a great time. If you're going to a local live collectibles auction, I would definitely take boxes with you if that's how they do it there. And I would go with somebody else because a lot of those places, if you, you got to hold the stuff. So the minute you, you win it, they hand it to you. Your number's recorded. They already got your information, a copy of your driver's license. So if you walk out, they got you. But um, the point of it is there you pay at the end. Um, and you're going to have to hold on to all that stuff. And if you get up and have to go to the bathroom, you don't want to leave that stuff sitting there because people steal that stuff. Hate to say it, but I've had people try to get in a box while I was sitting there. So, you know, I don't know if all the auction houses are like that, but I'm not very trusting anymore these days. I try to take one of the, my kids with me if I go to one. I'm not trying to scare you off because I love going, so don't don't get me wrong. Annie, the stuff I sent to auction was almost all fragile stuff I don't want to have around anymore. All very long tail, not bad items, just not my cup of tea. A lot of teacups, literally. I got rid of most of our teacup saucers, most of my pottery in China. We ended up giving a bunch away to our employees and stuff, and then what wasn't there then went off to the auction house. I just loaded them up in tubs and just sell it, whatever you get out of it. Um... Listening during the show is magic. Well, hopefully, uh, that that there's no promise that's going to work now. Uh, I think I will join Patreon and see what I think. I miss some of the videos you used to do on YouTube, but totally understand that. I'm not trying to move anything specific to Patreon, I should say. I get more views and more requests on information on the other stuff I talk about on here. And... Um, it's just a totally different structure, I guess. It's, I guess it hasn't been an intentional ploy. The folks in Patreon are wanting more detailed and information on stuff, and I try to do more detailed information. The video that went up today is a 30-some-odd minute video. The prior video was, I think, 30 minutes, and the one that goes up tomorrow is 30 minutes. It's, it's, I talk a lot. And everybody knows if you listen to the show, I'm probably over what I said I would do already. Yeah, I'm way over what I said I would do. So I talk a lot. You're going to get a lot of conversation on paper stuff and toys, uh, train videos, crafts. I've got public domain. There's, there's, uh, I think I just put up, I think today's video makes 197 or 198 of just my videos. I've got a few people, a few other videos up there, not from other resellers, but just in general. Um, uh, that's, that's all it is, basically. 
Um, if you don't like it for the one month, it's going to cost you $9.99 to see anything you want on the page. Hundreds of videos, hundreds and hundreds of hours. Um, your call, though. I'm not trying to say hey, but... Uh, let me pop down here. Any suggestion on identifying postcard artist, Jackass Retro? Um, I've got a video. Just type in, um, I think it's guidebooks. Um, and there's a couple books, and I've got a couple right up here that I always have handy. Um, they're, they're price guides, but they're, in fact, they're in, under that video, I think I have links to everything. If you go to my Amazon link, again, look down in the, the comments or description. There's a link to my Amazon influencer page. I think I have all of the guidebooks that I use. There's two good ones for postcards, and you don't have to buy them off that link. You can just get the name and get them wherever you want. But I think you can probably get a copy of either one of those books from the library to start with if that's what you wish. It won't cost you a dime. Or you probably use copy 10 or 15 bucks. They're older ones, but there's two real good ones. And they just have just pages of artists. It'll show you how the name is written because they're almost all impossible to read other than like Brundage or, or something along that line. Brundage is one that I always look for. She started off in Victorian trade cards and there's books and the whole word works on that. Clap Saddle is another one I always... There's a bunch of them. There's probably 30 or 40 good names of artists that I look for, including some major names on some cards too. Um, those books, again, you can go down to the my Amazon link down there to the page and just look up those price guides. I'm almost positive I have those ones that I use. Um, I know who they are nowadays, but once in a blue moon I have to look up a name. I can't quite make it out. Um, let's pop down and get a few more questions in. Well, thank you too very kindly, Jackass Retro there. Uh... And Kathy, thank you as well. The third party permissions, Annie, go to site preferences and then slide down to the very bottom. It's down in the bottom of site preferences. You can't miss it because you should it should be a real long section, at least it is on mine, for all the eBay stuff that's linked up to it. Yeah, Marty, site uh, settings. You can literally type in site preferences on one of the pages and it'll take you straight to there. I'm not done with Shopify or any of that. I'm not. Get, I'm, we're we're just putting on a hold till January. I, listing is all I care about now. Listing is all I care about now. Well, Frank, thank you for the five dollars super. I don't know why it's not showing me super chats at all. I uh, apologize for that. Can you break down your sources and percentages? Pickers, auctions, flea markets, wholesale. Um, great show. With what I share with you, with everybody here, probably. It's probably Pickers. I'm trying to be honest. I'm going to give you an honest representation. Probably Pickers. Just again, vintage we're talking about. 40% is probably Pickers. Auctions probably 40%. And then the rest comes from odd sources and stuff. Um, some businesses that I deal with. Not Pickers per se. That's probably a fair judgment on breakdown. Wholesale RA for like FBA or something. And the other store is pretty much the majority of that store. Um... We share the stuff that's that's picked on this store. Nothing else. To, and again, that's why I don't share the other stuff because I, it's something that other folks could jump into if I shared, and then I wouldn't be selling it because I would be squeezed out. But um, you know, there's there's things that I would never recommend people sharing, and sourcing on certain items is one. Pickers. Again, I I took a long time to find pickers. We've been doing this for, geez, we've been on eBay since eBay's been eBay. So basically, 25 years. We've had pickers for 10. When I lived in, in Florida, in fact, uh, Mississippi, if anybody's Meridian, I can tell you where you could probably get a picker because he was always good for us. But there's two places in Meridian. I, I yeah, There's pickers that I had to give up because I moved. And in Florida, we had some pickers too. But anyway, it just depends on where you live. Florida was, was fairly good for finding pickers back in the day. Again, like the first time I had people get me stuff was in Florida. And they were local, local places I would buy stuff from f for a while already. And that's, that's how you get in contact with people. Around here, I started with Craigslist ads, flea markets, and I kept running the same person. And flea market guys, let's, let's, let's just shoot this out. We'll end it after this, but flea market guys, uh, Frank, 
if uh, flea market guys um, works full time during the week and he does flea markets on the weekend, he can't get any extra money until he sells stuff on the weekend. And on top of that, he has to shell up money usually prior to the flea market starting to pay for his booth that day. So if he doesn't sell anything, he's SOL. So I've given a lot of people that do flea market booths, or especially those that do flea markets full time. They only do flea markets like on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or they might do one out of town on a Monday or something. They only can get money on days that they do flea markets usually. So I was able to fill in the gap and offer them the ability, I'll come out and see what you got. I'll, I'll pick it up and give you cash so you don't have to worry about going to the flea market to sell something. You need gas today? Call me. You got some stuff you want to sell? You're going to take the flea market? Call me. I'll come to you. You don't have to do anything but show it to me. That's that's what worked for me the best. That's that's literally the first guy I ever got to hook me up with something. I saved him time, energy, and he'd get money anytime he wanted. This one was a teacher, my first one. He was a retired teacher. He still taught a couple days a week because he needed the money. But I helped him fill in, and he always calls me now. Still calls me. Years down the road, he still calls me. So, you know, that's that's my best bet on it, is, is you get friendly with people you see at a flea market or this or that. One of the guys Dom gets stuff from, one of his comic book guys, is somebody he's been dealing with for years, and he's been going in there because he's a Dom likes comics, he collects comics, he goes to the same kind of person, he's built up a friendship with the guy. I think he brings him Swedish fish, if I remember. I, I, I'll, I'll sucker up to one of these guys and stuff, but I'm friends with them as well too. I talk to them, and most of the guys, even if I'm not buying, I'll just drop them a line. How you doing today? I won't ask for anything. Just, just. Let them know that you're you want to be nice. You're not just out to always get something from everybody. I'm not I'm not worried about all that all the time. There's there's time and a place for buying stuff too. So anyway, hopefully that answers a little bit on that. I, I I think I've ran way longer than I said I would. If you haven't hit the like button, I think I just need three more and we'll hit that hundred mark. If you're enjoying the conversation, please do hit the like button there for us. It does help the channel. I think I have covered everything that we wanted to discuss today. More stuff coming out, obviously. Um, I do have another What Sold video coming out. I'm going to show you some interesting items in that one, too. It was almost hard to pick this time because we got so many varied items. I will probably, um, for those in Patreon, I'm going to put a break between the videos that you see so we're not just all looking at paper. There should be another video coming up. Tomorrow's will be the third part in the paper one. And uh, one after that will be something else. And there may be one more finishing off the paper one after that. Um, I don't want to just bore everybody who may not be interested in the, the paper specifics. So you will see another one going into some bolos. Um, and I'll be discussing some other stuff, as I said, as well, too. So um, Halloween is my biggest thing. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I put on the costume um, today, actually. Um, I'm going to be really decked out for this one here, and it's going to be a real good show. I've already got some shot stuff ready, and there's going to be some mix-in with some pre-recorded stuff. Um, and again, as I said, if you're not on my Instagram page, the, the winner is going to be announced on Instagram. You have to be a part of my Instagram page to win. Even though it's going to be called, um, the, it's going to be picked on the live show, the winner will be announced on Instagram. Um, so if you want to be part of it, um, you probably want to get on the Instagram page. I know I'm not big on Instagram, but I'm trying to get a little more time here to put stuff up. So anyway, I do appreciate everybody coming on. I honestly and sincerely thank everybody. Thanks for the super chat for those folks who did put some out there. Sorry, I didn't get to all the questions. I honestly and sincerely do try to get to them. I don't try to sway away from them. And one last just reminder, please be respectful even to anybody leaving comments on my page. Don't insult them. Even if to you, it may not be a, a intelligent question. There are no dumb questions in my book. Everybody's at a different pace, so please don't attack people leaving comments. They won't get posted. I don't post anything nasty, foul language, links, con, scam, or anything like that ever on my page. None of that you will see on there. I think it's it's the right thing to do. I don't care if somebody thinks it's censored. I don't allow somebody to attack other people, me or whoever. I don't care. I don't like people attacking attacking people, especially people who have been longtime subscribers to the channel. So just keep it nice, keep it friendly, and your your everything shows up and I post everything. So anyway, I thank you all for coming on this evening. Hopefully you got something out of it again. If you haven't, please, please, please hit the like button if you did get something out of today's conversation. But have a good evening. Thank you.